It thrills him to stalk these women. Haven't you heard? He's a stranger in the prey. To break into their home. <laughs> what could be more intimate than squeezing the life from another human being? We started development on The Fool uh, about two and a half years ago, um, working with Alan, uh, and he had a great idea about two hunters, one of whom is killing people in Belfast, and the other of whom is the uh, person brought in to try and catch him. That'd be Detective Superintendent Gibson. Yes, ma'am. And that would be me. And they're very off. Gillian is someone that Al had always thought would be fantastic to get for this part, and we talked to her for quite early on, and luckily she came back as positive as we hoped she would be. Welcome to Belfast. I play a character called Stella Gibson. The local investigative officers are having trouble finding any clues, catching anybody, narrowing down who the killer is. And so she's been brought in to do a review of the investigation. I've done 28 day reviews before, sir. Not here, you haven't. Things are different here. That's how it begins. And then she ends up staying longer because it's determined that the case is actually more complicated and may involve a serial killer. We have decided that the three murders are linked and we are seeking one individual for these crimes. When I first read the script, I had a real strong sense of who she was and the kind of world that, um, that she lives in. The best aspect for me is getting an opportunity to work on a script this good. Alas, the time of the most despicable man is coming. Behold, I show you the last man. And this is the first time in a very long time that, um, that no matter what, but you know, whether it's in the punctuation or in, you know, the beats of the scenes, that everything is on the page. Make me SIO. I have the rank. I have the experience, I'm here, and I could be made available. The, the difference between me and any of these investigative characters is that I'm actually a ditz. You start with what you know, you present the facts that you have at your disposal, and you take it from there. I've got a horrible memory. So I think I would be a terrible investigator being able to watch a monitor when you have uh, Gillian Anderson responding to a moment that two or three years ago I read on a script that Al sent through to me and uh, it was quite a special moment. What was harder was to find our specter. We had such a clear character in mind and there was no one in our heads that could quite achieve the balance of the, the intensity that we needed and the warmth that we also needed. Yes, Actors came in to read for the part, but we didn't feel like we were quite finding our spectre. Uh, we then got Jamie in, and it was a revelation. He's an incredibly talented actor. He blew us away um, and uh, confirmed all our hopes that he was our spectre. We looked at a lot of different new talents, so we tried to find not your usual suspect to play the, uh, the killer, but to find a, a young and right person to do that. And I think Jamie uh, delivers a performance nobody would think a serial killer would give to the audience. I'm sorry, I'm not following. I'm sorry, I'm not following. Are you taking this seriously? Are you taking this seriously? I don't understand. Then let me explain. I play Paul Spector, who is um, quite an interesting character to play in that, you know, there's two very distinctive sides to him. What seems like a pretty conventional family existence. Um, he's got a wife and two young kids. Hey. He's got a good job as a briefing counselor. So on paper, everything looks pretty set and pretty normal. You look tired. Did you have a busy night? Quite busy, yeah. But he also has a different side to him, which is that he is the evil within this production. I approach him as two different characters. You know, there's an outfit that he wears and there's a ritual to it, and I find that really helps to become that side of him. I don't find it any harder to lock into than the family man side. <laughs> it's, it comes more naturally than I had hoped. 
and from there on in, when you have a cast with Gillian Anderson and Jamie Dornan in the two leads, uh, you're off to a fantastic start. Thank you. Thank you. Jakob was a, was a fantastic bit of luck, actually. Good ingredients. We had been tracking a project of his that he had directed two seasons of called Code 37. He um, didn't have an agent at the time. Uh, luckily, there seems to be only one Jakob Verbruggen on the internet. So I sent him a Facebook message um, and uh, got a rather confused email back saying, is this for real? I ended up in Belfast directing uh, Jamie Dornan and Julian Anderson. So it was a uh, surprisingly uh, fast starting adventure, actually. Right from the off, uh, the thing that excited us the most is he understood, I think, what we were trying to do with this guy. Only you can save me from myself. I think the story of the fall is very intriguing. It's not just about looking for a killer, it's also getting to know the killer. Oh, gosh, you're heavy. It's a killer that lives amongst us. That doesn't look like a psychopath. It's not your average killer, it's more your friendly neighborhood killer. Even a multiple murderer can have his share of good qualities. Or a pretty face. And the other interesting part is that we have a, a female cop, a female lead in this man's world that has her own inner demons to fight. And it's always about good and bad. The only question is, who are the bad ones? That on a McIntyre for murder, like not as an accessory. The story is, is, so, is so layered has so much different characters, different worlds, so every day is so different. It's a challenge, but it's also uh, an adventure. Getting Jakob in place and the way that he moves his camera and the visual style that he brings was really exciting. You read these things in America or, or you know, m big major cities, so feeling that that was in Belfast was actually quite disturbing. This person is so everyday, he could actually be on my, on my street. I had to go around and make sure my doors were locked, and I've never done that before. It thrills him to stalk these women, to break into their homes. This is the first project that I've filmed in Northern Ireland, and it's been an absolutely fantastic experience from start to finish. He wanted to show a city that is, uh, has changed and is on the up and it's very different from that city that we perhaps all knew from, from those years ago. Uh, I thought Belfast was going to be similar to East Berlin, somewhere in the 60s, 70s, but very gray, dark, but it turned out very different. I think Belfast is, like what people think about it, very vivid, bright, and, and, and very young. It's a city that makes a new start, and you feel it everywhere, so, no, it's a good experience to be here, and it's an interesting and fascinating city. It shows Belfast in a way that I haven't seen it depicted before. It's a very beautiful city. You know, it is a character in the series. You very much feel that its presence is a very strong element of the essence of the series. And that's different from what you might get if you were shooting in London. London has its own feel, as does Belfast, and it was nice to kind of just when we were looking for location, say, look, let's shoot this and we'll see a bit of Belfast that people won't know about. The Belfast of the Troubles is, is vastly different to the Belfast now. I know where you live, I know where you live. Oh, Did something happen to your friend? Oh, I am sorry I'm here about that. We uh, worked very closely with a local casting director to bring in as much local talent as we could. We were very lucky to attract some fantastic actors for relatively small parts. People like uh, Stuart Graham. What happened? He was under me as God. Ben Peel, uh, Laura Donnelly, lying with contact lenses in her eyes that made her blind for two hours at a time. It hopefully brings a quality level throughout uh, the piece. Um, working with John Lynch has been fabulous. He can um, move a hair in his eyebrow and, um, and you can understand what it is that he's trying to imply. Most of my scenes I happen to be with lovely young actresses who I'm doing really brutal things to. I apologise at the start of the day for everything that we do today. But uh, they've all been fantastic with the whole thing because it's not an easy thing to, to subject yourself to. I've been amazed at how, how they've handled it. And it, weirdly, they've given it an ease. And those days that we've had to do that stuff haven't been as harrowing as they are on the page. 
Local crew is fantastic. It's a hard-working crew, a crew we needed for this project. So please, here we go. There's also a lot of uh, good influences, good ideas. And I think it's like a, a snowball that goes. You know, there's one idea that starts and a lot of people start thinking about it, start adding something in. It's a very helpful and likable crew. And they, uh, yeah, they go far. They are being able to show this city from the contemporary setting um, has excited all of them. And I think that's rubbed off on the work that they've done and the work, the extra work they've wanted to do for this production. Faster! When I've seen our crew be filming uh, at the top of a quarry when a blizzard has moved in and hail is coming down at 45 degrees, and there's just a great attitude of wanting to get the shot. Okay. They work really hard, but also it's, it's fun. It's had such a fantastic amount of work put in from the research done on the scripts to the consultancy with the police and psychologists who have worked and interviewed serial killers. All of that research and all of that effort only pays off if what it works on the screen and if the audience come to it. We're hoping that The Fall is something that stays with people, uh, that they want to engage and know more about the characters as the story goes on. And we hope that we achieve that. If we don't stop him, he will kill again.